Hello guys, welcome to Banter Bleeds. I'm sorry for starting somewhat later than expected. Uh, just as usual, we're going to play several games, analyze them uh, during the games and maybe uh, a bit after each and every one. So I'm going to uh, provide you with some information and uh, probably if you are going to make some mistakes, I will point at them and uh, give you a chance to improve your chats. So uh, let's get started. Let's have a look if we have challenges already. Yes, we do. So uh, I'm going to uh, find someone I've never ever played before. So let's have a look. And um, it's also important if you can tell me on chat if everything is fine from a technical point of view. So can you hear me? Can you see me? It will be very helpful. Okay, so let's see. I have a feeling that we have only challenges coming from people I have already played and maybe there will be one more right now. Yep, so there are some challenges. So for example, Terry007, we have never played, so I'll accept that challenge first. Okay. The next Galileo says, all good. Great, thanks a lot. So, Karakan, right from the start. Okay, let's see. I usually play this exchanged variation. So if you follow my streams, uh, you probably know that it's uh, my main choice here. All right, e6, limited on bishop. Not sure if it is a good idea. So let's just take and then knight to f3. Continuing the developments, now we have curls but bone structure reversed, and we have already exchanged uh, dark squid bishops, which means if black wants to proceed with the uh, minority attack, that at some point when black plays b7, b5. First of all, black has to prepare it uh, because this square is controlled twice. Uh, but whenever black does that, it's possible for white to use the weakness of the c5 square. So for example, the knight from d2 may go to b3 and then to c5, one of the possibilities. All right, now what to do? So we have several options, I guess. Uh, I think queen e2 looks very natural. Just preparing rook a1 to e1, then knight to e5, and they attack on the king side. So that is the main plan here for white. To occupy e5 square with the knight, and then try to attack on the king side. h6, okay, it doesn't do anything. So let's just continue with the plan. Let's just continue with the plan. So if knight goes to h5, we can probably just play g3, controlling f4 square. White's position is very comfortable here, I guess. Very pleasant. Bishop to b7. So, this bishop here is quite passive. It doesn't do anything. Um, so, let's just continue because at the moment, black cannot capture on e5. In that case, we take with the pawn, attack the queen, and the knight simultaneously. So what to do now? That's a good question. So we have several options. I think we may simply go bishop b1 and queen to d3. That is one. Another option is just to be aggressive and play f4, maybe even f5 rather quickly after that. Maybe even f4, g4, and g5. That is also an interesting option. So honestly, I've never played this. So let's try this plan now. Let's experiment a bit. Usually I try to attack on the king side with the help of my pieces mainly. So I put the queen on d3, let's say, when the bishop is on b1. I then bring my rook to e3, bring it to g3 or h3, something like that. Well, in this particular case, I guess this plan should be quite natural. Looks like that. Yeah, 
So my idea now is just to play g5 next move. And if takes on g5, then takes on g5, and we open the f file. But what's important, we get rid of the knight on f6, which covers h7. So we may create some checkmating threats really soon. So black should be very careful already. Okay, his position is not that pleasant. If that jumps to e4, I think we just capture it twice. So it does nothing. And now, so the one idea that comes to mind almost immediately is just to play knight d2 to f3, in which case the knight d7 may go back to f6 and then jump to e4, potentially. Another option is just to play g5 now and ignore this knight d7 completely. So what to do? What is the right continuation? What is the right option? When if we play g5, the only move that uh, makes me feel not so comfortable is something like knight to f5. And then I really don't want to take on f5. So I want my bishop to stay on the board. This knight on f5 is quite good, honestly. So what to do? Maybe f5. f5 is also interesting, but... Well, I would rather do something against h7 square. Maybe just bishop b1 here, because why not? I don't see what black is uh, going to do anyway. And uh, something like bishop b1 preparing queen to d3 looks pretty good. So if knight takes on e5, I'm just taking with the pawn, I think. It's not dangerous at all. And now, what to do now? So knight covers h7, right? Uh, Kramnik student joined the show. Hello. So, uh, what to do? F7 should be our target, I guess. If we play G5 now, does it change anything? No. Knight still jumps to F5. Feels like I need to do something with my knight here. Knight D2. I also have to take into account that black wants to play uh, F6 next move, maybe. So, I should be careful. What if we bring the rook through f3 to h3 here? Hmm. Hard to say, and I don't have so much time, so I have to be faster now. It's kind of preparing everything before playing g5. Maybe it's just too slow. The position still looks very good. All right, knight g6, I didn't expect that move at all. Let's just play this. Queen f2, covering f4, so if we want, we may bring the rook to e3. Another idea behind queen f2 is just to play h4, h5, maybe. Add an, another pawn to attack. All right, let's go this way. F5, this is strange indeed, so let's take. And now we may take on F5, because rook on E8 is hanging, so we'll win a pawn at least. Only 50 seconds on the clock, that's a bit annoying. And what is the next move? So something like f6, trying to open the position of the king, or just bring in pieces to g-file, because we're indeed not in a rush, right? So we can play this move. e takes f5 is still not a, a, an option for black, and after rook g3, we create a threat of uh, f6. All right, and it's not the only threat, I think. Uh, so something like queen g2 may be extremely dangerous for black. And all of this having extra material, so position looks amazing. Again, there are no threats immediately. So maybe queen to g2, attacking g7. Rook there, okay, makes sense. Let's bring the rook to e5, I like this square. Just centralized position now. 
Another rook goes to g. Oh, rook g7 was possible. I blundered that. My lord. Why? Why did I do this? Position is anyway winning, of course, but still, it was stupid. Okay, so let's bring everyone to the attack. Okay. This is just a checkmate. Very soon. In this case, just in two moves. Okay, not a big game, actually. But of course, I missed uh, a much easier way to win it. So here, after black played bishop to d7, it was possible just to capture on g7. So instead of playing that move, I guess black should have tried something like rook to f7, maybe, first, to have the rook uh, here protect in g7. But this position is terrible anyway, so I just play rook g6. Uh, white is dominating here, white controls everything. All the pieces are still much more active than black ones. So nothing to command here. White should win this position easily. So what went wrong? Uh, I mean, in general, I don't think that it's a good idea to play e6 at so early stage of the game, kind of uh, making all bishops so passive. Uh, that was the start of black's problems. Of course, position was still playable. Uh, maybe instead of playing bishop d6, it was better to play bishop e7 because after the exchange uh, of dark squid bishops, as I said, there is no plan of the minority attack. So my point here is whenever black plays something like b5, c5 square becomes extremely weak and the typical plan includes playing b4, stopping that pawn on b5, then bring the knight through b3 to c5 and white is just controlling the whole board. Okay, so um, yeah, what has very pleasant position here, especially after occupying e5, I suppose, yeah, it's just a one-sided game, uh, black has absolutely nothing here. Uh, the only thing here, maybe f6 deserves some attention, I know it looks like a super uh, weakening of the position, uh, but uh, the knight is under attack, and if it goes to d3, there is at least an option of playing bishop a6 getting rid of uh, the bad bishop. That bishop is not doing anything anyway, right? So maybe after the exchange of that bishop, it would be easier for black to coordinate the rest of the pieces. That's the one idea. But the thing is, uh, I've seen this move and uh, I thought, all right, maybe I would play something like this. That was an interesting option just to... Uh, leave the knight on e5 heading because I'm not sure black can take it. In this case, I open the f file and now my rook attacks the knight and the queen is aiming to h7. And in general, the idea was like, uh, if queen goes away, I take on uh, a f8. But now I see it doesn't quite work because after rook takes a f8, not king, but rook, queen take goes to h7, but then after king f7, there is no follow-up, right? So after this check, there is king e8. Uh, takes, for example, takes, and if checked, then even knight to g8 is possible. So, and then queen f7. So I, d I just don't have enough resources to perform this uh, attack here. But maybe I, I don't have to take on f8 immediately. Maybe something like this may work. Um, yeah, position remains extremely unclear, I suppose. So now there is a direct threat of just taking on f8 and then queen h7 checkmate because f7 square is controlled. And if black plays something like, uh, say, knight to g6, uh, which stops me from playing immediate rook f8, because in that case, knight takes, or maybe rook takes, would be also possible. But I think I have some dangerous uh, threats after something like h4, right? Uh, so h4, h5, and yeah, then I'm gradually getting to h7. That was kind of idea. I was not sure if I would uh, eventually play that, but I think, F6 was worth trying because after knight e to g6, well, everything was super clear. And yeah, after this, white is just winning. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for the game. Let's have a look if we have somebody else I've never ever played before. There should be someone. Uh, so here is Kevin, uh, for example. Yeah, let's accept the challenge from Kevin. By the way, lots of players with uh, high ratings. 
Uh, I've never ever played before. Very nice. So now I'm playing with black pieces. Let's see. So Kevin, you're welcome. It's your turn. So Brian says, great commentary on the game. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. Okay. So close game now. And yeah, Catalan. Let's play Catalan. By the way, starting from the next game, I will try, most likely I will try something that uh, I don't usually play. So I'm, basically what I want to do is to experiment a bit. In this game, though, I'm playing uh, exactly what I usually play. So close Catalan, I don't take on C4. So I usually try to keep this diagonal closed. And one of the popular lines here. So as you can see, even if, even though, sorry, uh, white plays e4, black doesn't react. So the point is just to keep the pawn on d5 because with that pawn, that bishop on g2 doesn't feel very happy. So the main idea behind Catalan is uh, to open up that diagonal and to make that bishop active. Uh, black does everything to keep that diagonal well protected. So, by the way, that's the idea behind knight a6, to play knight b4, whenever there is a good chance, a good option to do that. And, well, in this case, we have the knight on d5, which is quite pleasant. The idea behind h6 uh, is to control g5 square, because in many cases, white uh, tends to play knight to e4, and then bishop g5, exchange in dark square with bishop, and then the knight from e4 may jump to d6. So. It's a good idea to prevent that in advance, in my opinion. Okay, bishop f1, not sure. I think it's time to clarify the things in the center. So, at very first glance, this approach with the c6 looks super passive, but as you can see, once black is ready, uh, well, they play c5. That's the thing. And the bishop becomes more or less active. And that's the philosophy of this setup. So you just play a bit passive at the beginning. So you make sure d5 is overprotected. You develop all of your pieces. And then at the right moment, when everything is prepared, you play c5. And I think it's prepared because, look, um, I'm better developed than white. So opening on the game should be fine for me. It doesn't mean it will lead to... Uh, advantage for black, but I think it shouldn't be bad at the very least. All right, so what's going on here? Knight is probably going to go to d6. Cd4 looks interesting because if knight d4, well, e5 is not hanging though. Yeah, so maybe it makes sense to start with something like queen c7 simply. So targeting e5, so maybe cd4 may become a threat. You can probably hear now uh, my kid crying on the background. So if you're for the first time here, you should know that I have two kids. So this sound is pretty typical for my streams. From time to time, my kids make sure that everyone knows that they at least exist. Sometimes it's a happy sound, like laughing a lot. Sometimes not really. So kids are kids, after all. Now what to do? So, interesting position. Uh, and I'm wondering if b5 is possible. Something tells me that it's not tactically sound, but the idea looks interesting. So b5, and if queen takes on b5, my knight jumps to b4, and the knight on f3 is under attack. Maybe we should just uh, play knight to b4 instead, not sacrificing anything. 
Because after b5, queen b5, knight b4, d takes c5 is unclear because knight on d7 is hanging. So I don't really know if it is good for me. Maybe we can play some like bishop c6 there, queen takes b4, then bishop f3, a tempo move, and then we take on c5 with the tempo. We sacrifice a pawn, but maybe not very pleasant anyway for, for white. I don't know. If we jump to b4 immediately, there is a3, unfortunately. Okay, so let's have a look at other ideas. What if we play c takes d4? Is it possible? Knight takes d4, knight e5, knight b5, also not necessarily that clear to me. What about just a6? Maybe it's too slow, I have no idea. But I wanna play b5, and if I place a4, now this knight to b4 may be an option. Because now this square is no longer uh, accessible for the pawn. It's already on a4, so a3 is no longer the case, right? And this means that uh, b5 is covered for now, and I want to play b5 next move. And the knight on f3 is under pressure. Looks interesting. I may also consider some like bishop d5 at some point. So replacing uh, my knight with the bishop. So what about b5 now? Is it a good idea? a b5, a b5, knight a3. Do we even achieve anything with this? I have no idea. But looks interesting because this may lead to c4 very soon after that. 96 is a move I missed. That's bad, but probably not so bad to regret about b5 move. So let's play bishop d5 first. And now b5 is hanging. That's a problem. That's a problem, but we can solve it easily, I think, if we take on d6 and play queen c or maybe just queen c6 right now, but then a b5. And maybe I started this active operations prematurely. I don't know doesn't feel very comfortable now. C5 is also under attack. Gosh. I think I spoiled very, very good position. There is a feeling I spoiled very good position. Yeah. Don't like it anymore. <laughs> oh, what to do? What to do? Queen is hanging as well. Kind of hard. Mm, let's take the pawn. Yeah, this may be an interesting move, but I spent so much time on it. Actually. So now we have b3 square to occupy with the bishop. And if dc5 we just take with the queen, protecting the knight on b4, everything's fine. And here I wanted to try this. Takes there, and then queen c6 attacking the rook and the knight, but it doesn't achieve anything because of rook to a3. Yeah, everything is fine for white here. But we may still win some material. Look, if knight e5 would just take it and take on a4, so I think rook a3 is forced, and then we just take on f3 twice, right? And then we take on d4, and if rook d4, then e5. No, knight on b4 is handy. No, there is nothing in this position at all. But nevertheless, we have to play faster now. Unfortunately, position is bad for black. But there are still some tricks, so we will try to survive it. It's a pair of bishops. Position is open, so it's dangerous indeed. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a good move. Mm, can I play this move? Not sure, but that looks super dangerous. Now it's no longer that bad. Now it feels even good. 
Uh, okay, I don't want to exchange one rook. Uh, more check. So, making sure there is no bishop e4, first of all. And then, getting the bishop. Okay, so white resigned. Um, well, very generous because it was still a chance to flag me, simply. And, um, yeah. Uh, but most likely white uh, simply missed a bigger advantage. Because after the exchange of queens, since the cd4 didn't lead to what I wanted, so rook d4, e5, then just takes there. Right, so there is nothing. Maybe I missed something, I don't know. But after knight d5 and this rook to a3, well, position looks quite vulnerable for black, right? And uh, so a5, bishop g2 there. I guess it was interesting for white to try uh, something like uh, the direct attack against a5, maybe even something like rook a4, I don't know. Or maybe even bishop to d2, just keeping the bishop on the board, that was important in my opinion. So I think white should be better here. I don't see the uh, super clear way to decisive advantage right now, but according to my experience, well, these positions are not, uh, not that cool for knights, for sure, because bishops are just monsters in open positions. And here's this passer. Uh, which looks like a weakness, but it's indeed it's not so simple for black to attack. Not so simple to get to that pawn. All right. So uh, let us continue. Thanks for the game. Interesting one. Probably somewhere around the moment where I started this B5 stuff, I missed something. Uh, yeah, something uh, which was better. For example, uh, one idea that comes to my mind right now. Uh, after I played knight to b4 and uh, white responded with the bishop to f4, which is clearly uh, a preparation of knight to d6, I should have probably just played bishop d5. Why didn't I do that? Because I didn't see the knight d6 move. I was not focused on that square for that moment. I don't know. Uh, so after bishop d5, we pin the queen, as we may notice. And we prepare queen b7. Another idea was just to take there and then to play knight to c2. But again, a ton should be calculated here because white may consider sacrificing the exchange for serious positional compensation. So I have no idea if it is a good idea in general. So here, knight d4. Doesn't feel like white has direct tactics here based on rook takes d4, so maybe it's playable. Uh, but look at queen e4. I don't know, I have extra pawn, no questions, but uh, bishop is coming to d3, so I would maybe even prefer uh, white here, and knight e6 is also an option. No, it's not very good. So this position is interesting, should be analyzed deeper, of course. Thanks for the game. Uh, one more game against somebody I've never, ever played before. Let's see if we have one. Uh, at least one game against almost everyone, which is great. So people are coming back. Uh, okay. No, no one. All right, so let's just go one by one. Super Bohemia is the next one, except. And we are playing with black pieces again. Don G. Wow. Have not seen for ages. D4, knight f6. Uh, Kramnik students asks, rather than rook c1, can white try uh, dc5 idea, knight a1, cb6, but my knight is there on d7, so I can recapture on b6. I also thought about it, but uh, I guess it was not very dangerous for black in that line. All right. So let me remember, c6 is our move here, bishop f5, this stuff. 
It's what we usually play. Uh, knight f7 is the threat, so let's just step back with the bishop. Bring the bishop to d6. That is something that we usually play, right? So nothing changes here. It's always the same against Super Bohemio. Uh, let's grab it and play ninety seven. Looks like just extra pawn and no compensation for white, just as usual. <laughs> I don't know. Knight b6, knight d5 comes to mind. Um, simple h6 move, although it weakens a lot, but I think it's fine. So let's just do something. I didn't check knight e6. Probably it's a problem, but takes, takes, bishop e6, king h8, rook on f8 is still protected twice, so it's not possible. Okay, now let's bring the knight to d5. So it looks like a perfect Karakan, right? Without bad pieces, with extra pawn on the board. Just a dream. Just a dream. Kramnik student says I miss pawn holder. Well, everyone miss misses pawn holder for sure. It's a great player. Great guy. So let's play a four. This move. Didn't expect that at all. So now we have a bishop against the knight when the pawns are on both flanks. Let's take with the queen, although I think any capture on d5 had some advantages. But I like this option. So we're getting closer to opponent's weaknesses here. The question uh, on Twitch, what about not playing c5 at all and trying to put pressure against d5 with the rooks? You mean d4 probably, but it makes no sense. You have not, no, no space there to do that. It will be extremely hard to accomplish. So c5 is necessary for sure. c5 is the right move there. So you destroy white's center. Okay. This move looks nice. Knight takes e6 was possible against it. So it was a blunder, actually. I should be somehow more careful because. Yeah, knight e6, rook f8, king f8, check on b8, king to the seventh rank, then queen c7, queen takes a5. Right? Right. That was possible. Could have lost a winning position. <laughs> yeah, and continuing with uh, the topic of attacking d4, well, uh, just imagine you need two rooks in the d file, but at the same time you have the knight on d5 and the knight on d7. So you have to go away from d5. We're talking about the previous game now. Uh, you, you have to find a good place for knight d7, which is not uh, simple. Then you should double your rooks on the d file, but it's anyway protected by default. That's why I don't think that uh, the plan you suggested was realistic. Okay, now. We need to undermine this d4. So let's come back to d5 with the queen. Rook there, intending rook to e5, I believe. Maybe we should just play f6 here. I understand this weakens e6, but e5 is too important. Yeah, let's play f6. I don't want to give my opponent a chance to get there with the knight or with the rook. And if knight h4, I just go back to h7. 
If queen goes to e3, I just play rook e8. Yes, for some time it will be passive, but once I prepare either e5 or c5, I think position should be much easier to, to play. Queen to g3. Maybe intending to bring the queen to c7. Should I care? Not sure. <laughs> um, let's try c5 immediately here. So queen on f2 controlled that square together with pawn d4. Now it doesn't, so it's time. It's time to get rid of that pawn. But if I take on d4, there is knight d4 and e6 will be under attack. So probably it makes sense to make this prophylactic move for now. So that after cd4, if knight takes, I just play e5. And I have four against two on the king side. Again, I have to focus somehow because I have only one minute. I talk a lot this time. But hopefully it's uh, useful. Another blunder. I blundered a four pawn now. Yeah. Very bad. But my pawn doesn't take. That's strange to me. It's just dc5 and then queen a4 was possible. I don't know why. My opponent decided not to capture that pawn. Wish a good chance to equalize the position. Maybe not completely, but at least to equalize the material. Now I think black is simply winning, right? Let's go. Grabbing the space and uh, now we may notice how important to have the pawn on f6 in this situation. It does control important e5 square. And we may continue with the pawn storm. I don't know which way is better, f5, f4 or h5, h4. Maybe we will just push all the pawns. Very pleasant position indeed. Mm, to take it or not to take. I think it's a good idea to take it, to grab that uh, one. Maybe there was a much clearer way to play it, but this one is also not so bad. But we have uh, queen ending now, yeah. which may be annoying. It's uh, not always simple to convert the advantage in this type of endings. Um, should I do something specific now? I think I can play this move. Yeah, much better technique is required to convert advantages in this type of endings. Not my technique. My technique sucks. Oh, this is a great help. Now it's super simple. So exchanging queens was not allowed. Ah, stupid, even here. I have not showed the right uh, technique. So it was possible when the king was in e7, it was possible to bring that queen from f5 to f8 with the midi checkmate, I think. Uh, so, okay, interesting one, but uh, lots of blunders. So I was really relaxed after I managed to exchange on f4 and bring the knight to d5. So I mean, how this position can be dangerous for black. Right, so just extra pawn, as I said, just a super version of Karakan, where you have uh, all the advantages of the Karakan in addition to extra material. All right, nevertheless, so you should basically um, improve somehow 
the order of moves, maybe maybe some ideas here. I mean, super bohemio because you know every time we get this or a very similar position and it's always the same, almost always the same. Okay, thanks for the game. Uh, next challenge is from um, Eldis. Do okay. Not sure how to pronounce your nickname correctly, but yeah, let's play. So again with black, lots of uh, games with black pieces here. And I promised to experiment a bit, right? So, oh, my opponent is also experimenting. Okay, let's play something absolutely unclear. So with no theory here, just zero theory included in this order of moves. <laughs> So normal Sicilian, but without pawns on B file. I have no idea who benefits from it. So let's try to find out. Just developing the pieces for now. Maybe intending to play d5. If white plays e5, there is something like knight to d5. So should I castle or should I just play d5? d5 is risky. So no, I'll just castle. And I don't think it's the right order of moves, so maybe e5 was better. So start with e5 and then d4, because in this case, I may try d5 right now. But then bishop goes to b5, we can protect the knight with a temple with the queen b6. I guess it's fine for fine for black. Let's do it. So bishop b5, now the center is under pressure, knight on c6 is under attack, um, but I thought I would be okay after a simple queen to b6. It's a tempo move, attacking the bishop. If bishop c6 and queen c6, I'm totally fine, so it's like an improved um, French defense. Because yeah, my bishop is not that great, but without this pawns on the b-file, first of all, I have an easy a6. Uh, option right and my bishop is good and now there is no light script bishop for white in this position which is very good for black I would say and this knight gets to e4 so feels like we are already better in this position with black pieces the question what to do if white plays e5 when the knight is on f6 normally uh, you would uh, probably go to uh, d5, but sometimes you may jump to g4, attacking e5, um, and so on. So it depends on the position, answering the question from Carl on YouTube. Uh, it's so tempting now just to grab that pawn on f2, but I know it, it will not work. Uh, what is the right move, though? I'm not against knight takes e4, honestly. So just cd4 and attack d4 somehow. Like cd4, what is next? Hmm. Interesting situation. We may also try something like f5 here. Really aggressive move. Do know. Bishop a6 is also good looking one. Yeah, let's do bishop a6. Just continue with the development, and if knight e4, d4, we'll have d3 square for the bishop. Black is much better developed now. Look at this. Yeah, another comment about knight g4. Yeah, knight g4 is kind of 
it's always tricky so it depends on if you have enough resources then to attack e5 because if white easily protects c5 then the knight on g4 is usually misplaced but once again it depends on the position every position is unique a4 white is not in a rush to complete a development here it should be somehow punished i think because it's kind of careless approach in my opinion hmm how to prove what is doing wrong here what is doing wrong things so let's take here and then probably just bring the rook to c8 and playing on open file uh -huh, this way okay but that's fine as i said before we have this d3 square and now d4 is under pressure simple play for black i, I think if I don't blunder or something, but it doesn't feel like that. I should we'll go to e3, though. So, yeah. Maybe it will be not so simple. All right, the bishop goes to the other square. Let's just take on e3, and let's bring the bishop to d3. Now, d4 should drop, in my opinion. Right? Great position, I mean. Amazing one for black. Rook to c3, okay. Okay, queen b6. Attacking the pawn on d4 the second time. Not will definitely drop. Uh, so another question from Carl. So knight f6, uh, is it a loss of tempo? Well, it depends. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when you provoke e5 and then undermine that pawn, you may solve all, all of your problems in the center. So probably it's even good that white plays that move. Because the closer our pawns to your camp, the easier it is to undermine them, to attack them. They become much more accessible, right? We can grab on a4, we can also take e5 pawn, e5, rook d3, rook d3, so everything looks fine. I don't know which pawn is better here to capture. Let's take that one on a4 because it gives us a passer, right? On the a file, there is a good question what white is going to do in general, because it's not so simple, I think, to find a good plan here. This bishop controls the squares that knight could have occupied. Aha, uh -huh, this is the idea. Probably I should have captured that pawn on e5, to be honest. Now the knight is going to occupy uh, d6, and probably I have to take on c4 to prevent it. Ah, this is bad. Or maybe I don't have to. What if I just play uh, queen to queen to b5 knight d6 queen e5 rook d3 rook d6 risky should be still fine though rook d3 rook d6 there is no checkmate i hope rook e4 queen e4 rook d6 yeah there is no checkmate who oh. yeah i overcomplicated the thing here Oh, queen c7 is a move. Oh, shit. My god. And then, yeah, queen to c7 was probably winning. Because now I have two extra pawns. That should be fine. But queen c7 pinning the rook. Oh, rook d5 was possible against it. No, it was not winning. I was still fine there. That's interesting. Let's go on. F7 is under attack, so let's play this check. And then queen f5 protecting f7 and attacking f2. There was a huge blunder. One more check to control the long diagonal and uh, protect the rook. I think it should be lost. 
should be just lost. Where are the checks? I don't see one. So first check here, then a2. And there is a thread of queen f1 followed by a1. Time to resign. Time to resign. Okay, let's get back to the moment of queen to c7 where I supposedly blundered something. So I captured on e5. Rook takes d3, rook takes d6, and then queen to c7. But as I said, I guess rook d5 is the move that helps. I don't think it's very good for white. I don't see anything actually after this correct rook to d5 move. So after rook to d5, uh, white has nothing, absolutely. I'm still uh, several pawns up. So, yeah. It was just an illusion it was winning. In fact, there is rook d5 attacking the queen. Yep. Queen b7, just uh, rook to d8. Right, right. So, nothing dangerous, in fact, but could have been uh, annoying under the time pressure, as I suppose. I could have panicked in that case, but as we may notice, everything was under control. Uh, so what went wrong uh, for white in this game? Uh, I believe that here, instead of playing d4, exactly in this position, it was interesting to play e5, and after knight to d5 to play d4, so this way. But as I said, answering the uh, comment of Carl on YouTube, uh, so once the pawn is on e5, it's quite simple to attack it, so to undermine it, and so on. So I don't know what is the best way to do that. It starts looking like a Sveshnikov Sicilian, something like that. Um, so going back to b6, that bishop goes to d3. Yeah, probably just taking on d4 and then playing d6. That is usually played here as a typical plan. But this position is absolutely playable for both sides. Okay. All right. Let us continue. Uh, Shannon Ford. Yeah. That is the game of the games. And still black pieces. There is no chance for me to play something really cool with white this time. Because I'm always paired against my opponents with black. Shit. <laughs> okay. Against Shelling, no experiments. Just playing what I usually play. So the main line? No. Not the main line. Okay. I expect d5 probably. But that's fine. So now, um, just bishop d6, I suppose. Hmm. So what is ignoring something like bishop h2, but it will not work because at the end of the line, what will have something like bishop f4. Um, let's just take that pawn. So some moves I miss completely. Uh, what to do now? That's a nice idea, by the way. So if I play bishop d7, there is rook e1 check, supposedly, forcing my king to a bad position. Uh, or maybe bishop e7 will be possible, but then queen takes c4, castles, bishop f4, gives white what he wants, more or less. Uh, active position and uh, damage pawn structure here. Yeah. So king f8 immediately. It's not good. The main line is knight to c3. No, the main line is e5. That's the main line of scotch. Answer him from knight. I want to do now, just bishop e7, I, th I suppose. I don't have anything better, unfortunately. And then castling. 
that's kind of kind of bad <laughs> the pawn structure sucks don't like it at all but now what if we play this move So queen has to protect the bishop. So probably queen a6 should be played now. I'm not sure the knight c3 was the right choice. But it doesn't feel like uh, white is bad here. So still everything is under control more or less. But our queen a6 we may try something like uh, rook b8. Stopping the bishop from this simple development. Controlling b2 and also creating a sort of rook b6 potentially. Right? Right, so black's position is not that bad, indeed. All right, sacrificing the exchange, probably having some compensation for it. Hmm. So the idea is clear. If I play knight d5, let's say the first move that comes to mind, there is queen e4 uh, attacking my h7. So I should regroup somehow. But how? Probably I should sacrifice some material here. Let's say rook b8 attacking b2. And I also intend in rook to b4. That is probably the main idea. I'm trying to get rid of that queen. Queen e6 is possible, I know. It's probably not so dangerous as uh, other directions where the queen may go. So here I wanted to try this move. Covering the d file and preventing bishop takes h7. Knight to b5. And what if... Okay, knight to d6 is a threat. Not necessarily that dangerous, but annoying. There is also bishop a7 option. What if I play this move, king h8, then just bishop a7? All right, let's clarify the things with this knight. I don't really like all this pressure on my position. Interesting game. Just as usual against Shelling. Aha, uh -huh, this way. Completely blundered this. Maybe it's not so dangerous, though. Or maybe it is. I don't know. That's a very good move. <clears throat> Too many forks here. Cheesy. But I don't really see what can I do. It doesn't really help. Oh, God damn it.
yeah, if rook b4, then probably just uh, knight takes c7, rook takes c4, knight takes e8. Uh, that sucks. That sucks. <clears throat> and if rook f7, then knight g5. Oh, Lord. This is a bad position. Oh, okay. Okay, let's try to survive it. So I expect to be a pawn down as a result. Maybe there is even better option for white somewhere. Ah, bishop f5. What's going on here? Bishop is coming to e6. Um. I don't know what to do. I have no time. I have no time. Yeah, White is just killing me here. What to say? Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, I blundered this knight d4 idea. That was very strong. Very strong. Too many forks. Instead of uh, playing a6, of course, I should have tried some like queen e7, but it was too late. I just played a6 and yeah, it was just bad, bad, bad position. Maybe I should have played some like queen c8 or queen e8 here. I also considered that move. I don't know, but in, in general, it's hard to play this position. Yeah, I have lots of uh, weaknesses, right? And um, lots of weaknesses, it's hard to play it. Yeah, I missed that one. Uh, maybe bishop d6 is too cocky for this line. So something like bishop e7 and castling, which may lead to, with the transposition to the same main line of this direction when white captures on d5. But this also gives white additional options like uh, c4. Another idea is just uh, not to take on c4 and to play c6, protecting that pawn. But again, I think bishop d6 is too much. I don't know. We should check the theory here because I'm not sure. I'm aware of all of these tricks here. Thanks for the game. So the next one, Frankie Four Fingers, except. And Karakan and White Pieces. Finally. <laughs> because I'm a bit tired of playing with black. Okay. This way. Interesting. Isn't it dangerous for for black to play like this? Say bishop b5 check. Takes there. And takes on d5 extra pawn, right? Right. Yeah. I think I can do it. Why not? So the knight d7 is bound to knight e5. It's pinned. Doesn't feel very safe for black, in my opinion. Let's just castle now. Knight f3, I just take back with the queen. And my idea is just to play rook d1 next move. Knight to a3 can be also considered. Creating the threat of knight b5 and then bring another rook to d1. And if bishop takes, then again, there is a problem with this pinned knight. 
But if there is a way not to damage own pawn structure, of course, I would prefer that one. Okay. So what is the right move now? Um, knight to a3 may be an option, to be honest. This may be an option. <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. The knight to f6, queen somewhere doesn't really matter, or maybe it does matter, because our bishop may be a target. So if, if our queen is not on this diagonal, there is knight f3, g takes f3, and bishop takes f4, just uh, damaging my pawn structure on the king side. I have to be careful here. What to do instead? We may play knight to d4, centralizing the knight, and if knight f3, knight f3, then bishop takes f4, but the pawn structure remains intact. Fork to d1, then just knight f6. Yeah, a bit silly. Maybe just bishop g3, but it's just a little... Uh, the move that doesn't accomplish anything, so... I'd rather play something more active. Well, let's try this move. Maybe it's pseudo-active, I don't know. Definitely not the best way to play this position. So if knight f3, I just take with the knight, bishop f4, some like knight a3, trying to complete the development and just simplify the stuff. So extra pawn is after all an extra pawn, right? So it's just an exchange. Now there is a shred of knight b5, maybe queen c4, exchanging queens. Everything is under control here at very first glance. So let's just bring the knight to b5. Looks like a good move because if even if we don't achieve anything, we can bring that knight to d4 at least. Which is a good position for it. Now queen a4, bishop just goes away somewhere maybe, and there is nothing in the sense of attacking a7. So I would rather just centralize this piece. Unnecessary move, but I think it's fine. Just trying to ask where the bishop goes, because if it goes to d6, I can easily exchange it with the knight b5 and takes on d6. Simplifying the position even more. And if it goes to h6, well, it's just a bad position for it, I guess. So let's do it. Knight d4 tempo move, not to lose it on f3 after knight takes d6, which is possible, by the way. Although, at the end of the line, I could have captured on f7, attacking both rooks, but was not clear to me taking into account this uh, weakness of light squares in my camp. Now we can keep on winning Tempe because of that queen, it's quite vulnerable here, as you may notice. So, yeah, looks nice. And I have a feeling that now we have even something like knight to c6 move. Yeah, looks crazy. Looks strong. Skin there, and what about taking the rook on d8, taking the bishop on d6? There should be some sort of checkmate really soon, right? Um, or something close to that result. Maybe I will be checkmated, but I don't think so, to be honest. So now I guess we can play rook d1, right? So rook d1, if rook takes, there is queen f8, using the fact that the back rank is completely weak. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, it's absolutely lost. Yeah, 
with such a bad rook it's really hard to achieve anything so now i think the last task for white here is to make sure there will be no checkmate whatsoever on the king side and the position is absolutely winning them so extra exchange and at the same time extra two extra pawns in addition to that now three now three extra pawns in addition to extra exchange very nice very good let's simplify a bit more we don't need complications here when we have such an overwhelming uh, material advantage. All right. Let's just take this way, I guess. So extra rook now, buddy. There is nothing absolutely because the next move will be rook d8 most likely exchanging the rook and winning the game okay so what went wrong here uh at the very beginning i think this e5 is just too much uh as prom knight correctly mentioned uh on chat king d7 can take here technically yes but come on i don't believe it's a good uh, position for black, honestly, but maybe it was a way to, to keep the pawn on the board. I don't know, there should be something, I, I think. But maybe there is nothing uh, straightforward. I have no idea. Okay, Friedel, except. Playing with white pieces. Okay. So I wanted to experiment, right? So let's try it. Queen d4 is a valid option. It doesn't give white anything significant if black plays correctly. But uh, nevertheless, it's uh, different compared to capturing d4 with the knight. So sort of experiment, right? So let's castle. Can we play immediately e5 here? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't give us anything. So let's just keep on developing pieces here. Let's just centralize everything. It feels like we have a nice advantage in development at this stage, at this point. Can we play something like knight d5? Typical Sicilian sacrifice. If knight takes d5, e d5, and bishop g5, knight g5, e5, I don't think we get anything. Maybe I'm just blundering something there, but I don't I, I don't really see anything specific. So e5 now, d takes e5, knight takes c5, uh Kathleen, let's say, and then what? Knight takes d7, bishop d7, bishop f6, bishop f6, queen d7, wins a piece, right? So e5, d5, knight takes c5. If knight takes c5, rook takes c5, queen is under attack, but queen gets back to c7. I don't see a follow-up there. Should be not so bad position for black indeed. Yeah. Not so simple. So probably we should uh, fall back to just typical plan here, which is going away with the queen, then bring the knight to d4, and then f4 and stuff. Does it make any sense? I mean, it looks like a normal Sicilian then. Yes, I'm not sure. Let's just play this first. If b5, I just go away with the bishop and b4 is stopped. 
So this move at least has some idea behind it. It's not entirely stupid. Castles. Let's bring the pawn to h4. And if h6, I may even ignore it. Here I come up with some prophylaxis. Okay. Does it give me anything, this prophylaxis? Again, I'm not sure. So now what? Uh, let us step back. It's time to bring the knight to d4 and push our pawns somehow. It's also possible to play g4, maybe then bishop f6, g5, but I don't really like the idea to give up my bishop. And here, I think black has just blundered this move. So the queen on a5 is heading. It's typical stuff. That's why I play king to b1. Now we have this intermediate capture on e7. And I think since the knight is pinned and the pawn on d6 is under attack, it should be a good position for white, but maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe black is doing well here. Yeah, h6 is very good. Basically very simple and very good, very efficient. I thought I would just grab that pawn on d6 as a result, but as we may notice, it's not even close. So if I take on f6 now, knight f6, rook d6, knight e4 gives me nothing. Absolutely. Maybe even the worst position. Okay. I miscalculated for sure. Bad. Very bad, Andre. <laughs> Very bad. And even this is possible, my lord. So f3. Yeah, bishop goes to h3. Everything is under control. Yeah, black plays a very good game here. And I'm playing like a passer. More or less. Yeah, knight e5 looked so good, and it turned to be so crappy. Fantastic. All right, so another fight for a draw, I believe. And it's super hard because I'm a pawn down in the worst position uh, and I don't have enough time on the clock as well. So that's also an issue. I don't see, even see a good plan. Knight to c6 maybe? So at least we have some pressure, but again, we have only 26 seconds on the clock. It's not going to work, I suppose. And especially if you keep on blundering stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll just resign. It's, it's really a bad game, really bad one. So everything started after knight d5, I think. <laughs> knight d5 was absolutely wrong. Uh, well, maybe knight e7 was wrong, I don't know. But if you don't take on e7 here, then what is the point? So knight e7, rook e7. Oh, yeah, of course. So 
rook d2 was not correct. The right move was to take on d2 with the knight, but uh, I didn't realize that it, the, you know, rook d2 is so bad. So knight d2 protects in e4, and now if h6 or something, then bishop to f4, let's say. So e4 is protected, that's important, and we can protect it with the f3. So white should have, in my opinion, a positional advantage uh, in the long run in this situation. So having a pair of bishops attacking this d6, but maybe, again, I'm just overestimating my position. So something like this looks pretty good for black. Yeah, maybe white has nothing here at all. But at least it could have been a, you know, equal position after something like this. Yeah, terrible game. Terrible game and good game for Friedel. Congratulations. All right, I think it's uh, time to play our last game because... Uh, it's already the time, not because I'm losing games, because, you know, I'm here not to win, I'm here to teach. But as you can see, the quality is uh, decreasing, <laughs> game after game, so. I'm really not in a position to teach you in such a situation, so the last game for today, I think should be fine. So Janish, Counter, Gambit, or Gambit, I don't know how it's called correctly. Mm -hmm. This move, interesting. Probably I should have captured on c6 first. But still, I don't think my position is that bad. Okay, so my pawn is still on the board. The other question, if it is anything for me, because it will be captured really soon, to rook e8, let's say. And we're going to castle, I suppose. Pawn e6 will be uh, captured. If knight d4, there's queen b4 check, so I don't think we have anything better than castling, so let's do it. Let's bring the knight to d4. So we have, in my opinion, a better pawn structure here. Black has a pair of bishops, though. So what is more important? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe it's a bad move. Creates uh, just a target for black. Yeah, definitely not good. But I think it's not so simple for black to activate the pieces, but I should have protected before pawn. Ah. Playing so bad chess now. So Bishop of Fate was great, attacking before and creating a threat of c5. I think black would have been much better in that case. I think I can do something to that pawn a7. What about this move? If black plays something like a6, I attack b6 with the bishop c7. And in this case, what if I just take and put the bishop here? I guess it's just extra pawn, right? And we control dark squares, which is very important. All right, let's centralize. The king d3 is not hanging. d3 with not hanging, my friend, <laughs> because of this. All right, but even if uh, you don't take on d3, I mean, 
I can bring the king to protect it. I can also play just d4, then bishop c5. So um, gradually it should be kind of convertible. Uh, for white, it's still far away from, you know, winning position, I guess. Uh, but the pawn structure is great. Um, black is suffering here. Black is struggling to find an object of attack. So everything is sort of under control. But as I said, I missed uh, the bishop f8 resource, so f3 was cheesy. Instead, I should have played something like that, protecting the pawn. And if you play this move, I can play that move. Or maybe I should have simply uh, placed my bishop on d6, but then after rook e6, I didn't know what to do with this. So, uh, yeah, after b6, I'm like a3, and then anyway, bishop f8, and black is doing okay. Um, after f3, 100%, just bishop f8 attacking the pawn, and once I protect it, c5, and black should be better. I think, right? Um, that's the thing. Uh, not the best shape, uh, definitely not the best quality of chess. Uh, I mean, what I demonstrated this time. Uh, but nevertheless, there were several interesting games, I guess, and uh, I hope you have learned something uh, from this episode. Uh, wish you all the best and see you next week. Bye-bye.